day, loving husband, caring father. But by night, he has a whole other gig. His name is Guy Friday. Coca Morrisley, making such a bad cola, the refreshing amphetamine with a twist, are pleased to present another gig in the exciting case files of Guy Friday. Last episode, Guy Friday released Pinky Doom from Dr. Wickestai's lair, only to be viciously booed by a drunk later that night. Will this gig be any better? Find out as Coca Morrisley presents episode 8. Locked 
trapped in a box and buried under the seventh strata of Eldrin. Why was he here now? And more importantly, what exactly did he mean when he said that he was going to lead my band members astray? Hey there guys, would you like to find out what it feels like to get anything you desire? I got the power, so I have no doubt that I'm first to just need anything you require. Is it money, is it power, is it women and fame? Just a fraction of the gifts I have to offer to you. So for if you decide, throw off your shackles and chains. Ditch your loops, I got Friday on the road with my crew. The allure of evil has a hold of you boys. And you willingly really suck up my bros, you'll matter. Friday, Friday, you love me just a little annoyed. When you trap me in the seven strata, and I wanna destroy your life and everything you hold dear. And you regret you ever choose to draw more on breath. I won't try to kill you, Friday, have no fear. I'll just give you a fate worse than death. So we stuck to this damn bull, I defeated you once, and I can do it again. And don't you even think that you can make a way with my crew? Huh? Hey guys, where you going? What's the matter with you? I have control of their mind. You better let them be. I got a family at home that's dependent on me. I got a gig, got a go. Shit, I'm gonna be late. Like, even if I'm about to check you in your face. How about you? century and a half trapped under seven layers of Eldrin soil. I still remember the battle of Arcadens as if it were yesterday. I fought alongside Apollo, a god from Olympus, as my ally against Bob's wicked confederacy of Seraph and the forces of the mundane. This was the last major conflict in Arcadens, and it seems almost cosmic being part of both sides. Every occupant of Arcadence has a duplicate twin, but mine was always trying to plot Arcadence as the end. You see, Arcadence is the barrier that keeps the mundane from dropping down upon the earth and making the people insane. But evil Bob decided it would be a delight if he could use the mundane on gods and humans alike. So he made himself a deal with the evil Serath, the leader of the mundane, who signed a pact to attack when a war was waged. Arcadence and the mundane, I fought alongside Apollo, kept the evil restrained. The humans were saved, I locked my Bob in a cage, dug a seven layer hole in the open Rain. I dropped the cage inside, my body swore revenge, although I knew he'd never taste the air again, and he should still be there unless someone set him free. But who will never leave that be? A familiar presence surrounded me. All of existence began to fade into the fog. The gig was off, and so was my paycheck and the gas bill. This was the worst time Bob could have picked, and part of me knew that's exactly what he wanted. Hey there, a guy. Uh, Apollo? In the flesh, so to speak. Well, Ap Apollo, what are you doing here? What, what is this place? And, and why are you talking like you're from Cheek to Waka? I think you better understand me this way because you moved the buffalo. Um, it kind of helps. Well, um, what's up? Well, uh, I brought you here to warn you that uh, your evil Bob there got uh, loose. Yeah, I know. We just brainwashed my entire crew right before the gig. Gig? Uh, what's, a, what's a gig there? No time to explain. Listen, can you help me? I, I really need to get to a, this jazz bar in Lackawanna like in the next 30 seconds. 
Oh, yeah, hey, I know that place. Uh, yeah, that uh, Bacchus, uh, they're almost every night drinking there. Really? really? Bacchus? Does he still speak saxophone? You sure he still plays the drums while he does it? Uh, what a guy, eh? You know? Yeah, great. You think you can get us there in the next few seconds? Yeah, sure. Uh, just let me uh, change into my uh, mortal form here. Uh, okay, great. Uh, wait, um, that, that's, that's not mortal form. That's a cat. No, you can't go out like that. No, man. No. no. You got to change it. No, come on. no, we're not ready to go back, man. Like looking, you're a big yellow cat. That's ridiculous. No, no, this is human form. What I look like. No, that, <sighs> Apollo. <sighs> you have a point. Okay. Well, could, could you at least just get the cat here? Oh, you remember? You know the car I drive. The the car I drive now. Yeah. Get make it come here. Come on. We got like ten seconds. Come on. Thank you. Thank you, Apollo. Okay, let's get the piano out of the car. We gotta hustle this up. We gotta be on stage in five, four, three, two, one. The air was thick with cigarette smoke and old man sweat. This was the kind of bar that, despite the fact that you've never heard of it, looks like it's been around since the Pan Am Exposition. A strange kaleidoscope of 8x10s, automobile parts, and dim neon signs for beer long since discontinued, all draped on the nicotine-stained walls like some cryptic evidence of an ancient civilization. I nodded to the bartender, who jabbed an apathetic thumb towards a small, poorly lit stage. Apollo slumped alongside me, trying to look as inconspicuous as a large yellow cat could be in a decrepit jazz bar. He pulled over to a bard's stool in which sat a man who could only be the god of alcohol himself, Bacchus. Hey, guy. Oh, man, I haven't seen you in ages, guy. How you doing? Not too bad, Bacchus. Listen, I got a little problem here. What's up? See, Evil Bob has kidnapped my guys. Evil Bob is loose? We gotta put him back. No, no, hold on a second. Before I can do that, I gotta do this gig. Well, wait, what could possibly be more important than to put that evil son of a bitch back in his box? Listen, I gave up immortality for my family. So, if I need to rile you and Catboy here up to help me out up on this stage here, that's my first priority, okay? After that, we'll go patch him up. I'll help you get it done. And God Friday, it's time for the gig. We gotta go look, man. Listen, Apollo up on the drums. Back yes. You grab that upright bass, sit your drunk ass down, and sing me some saxophone. And God Friday's gonna take the piano. What you got to say? Sit your drunk ass down and let Guy Friday take over.
Yeah, everyone. Give it up for Bacchus. All right. Well, it was time for me to take a little smoke break, kick back, and reflect on the evening. And while I was taking a little break, I had myself a refreshing glass of Tabacola. Yeah, I like to bite the wax tadpole every now and then. As a matter of fact, while I take this break, why don't you all go take a break and grab one for yourselves? situation, but now it was time to take care of business. Apollo ran off to take care of Serath. I figured it best since he was a little more powerful than I was at the point. I decided it'd be all for the best if I got back his home safe. He continued to ramble on in some sort of a drunken haze until even I couldn't understand him anymore. I didn't want him to drive in the condition he was in, so I decided to drop him off at the train station. We sat, and we waited, and we waited some more, and we waited some more. It's the metro, it really just takes forever to get there, you know. And finally the train arrived, and I put Bacchus on the train. You're welcome, Bacchus. Have a good night. What's that, Apollo? Awesome. Looks like he located Surat. Now all we gotta do is take care of Evil Bob. Apollo narrowed his eyes and waved upon the air. And so I knew Apollo's senses had cut onto the trail. I had to save my crew. I had to answer the call. I had to deal with my doppelganger once and for all. Surat would have to be next. Oh, yes, it's like Apollo already took care of that mess. So I prepared myself for the battle that waited. Evil Bob, your wickedness will be abated. For ya. I'm coming. And I'm bringing a gigantic industrial strength size can of whoop ass and use you as the can opener. There he is. Hey, Bob.
She can crash till you change back. Okay, how's that? No, really, you like my. They'll like you. Okay, you're a big yellow cat. My daughter's gonna eat you up, dude. I mean, no, 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 not like no. I mean, she'll love you. She'll, she'll. You know, you're you're a cat, man. I mean, you know, you're a cat. <laughs> what do you want me to tell you, man? You, you don't even have the power to change back into your normal form. How are you even going to get back to Arcada? I mean, all right, well, you're staying with me. Just don't, don't give me that look. Come on. Don't give me that look. All right, you, come on. I'll introduce you. Honey, I'm home. Hey, how you doing, sweetheart? Hi. Look what daddy brought you. Look at boots. Uncle Boots. <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a good name for a cat. <laughs> Alright, it's time for bed, sweetie. Have a good night. Good night. <laughs> you hear that, Apollo? Uncle Boots. <laughs> that's your name now. Okay, I'm done. I, I have to do it again. <laughs>